when I think of the term race, I quickly think of good memories. But for some reason, I also think of sadness. This is my story. Graham and McCartney describe deficit discourse as a way of speaking to that individual such that deviations to the norm is a problem and that problem is related to that individual. This is similar to Ford's definition where instead of speaking, it's a way of thinking. The white kids would often call us names like N-word and B-word. Sharon Payne, who currently resides in the Gallimbani Circle Sentencing Court, had a similar experience to Doreen Nelson. Susie White Girl stood up. She announced to me and the class, My father reckons your mother's just a N-word. But you see, here's the thing. It's not the obvious views that we are highlighting here. It's the not so obvious deficit views that teachers need to watch out for. A perfect example of this was found in an article that contained the following acronym ATSI. According to Linda Graham, Indigenous people find this term offensive and should not be used. However, as you can clearly see, not only it's being used, it is used ironically because the author is addressing racism in schools during COVID-19. Normalization is also another medium that was found in the book that has been shown to create educational exclusion due to race. Examples in the book was found through the lens of Zachary Pacholsky, who says, I would wear sunscreen religiously and avoid going to direct sunlight to keep my skin as pale as possible. As you can see, this is a clear example of normalization, particularly the first view of normalization, where people had to or felt like they had to adapt to the environment. Another good example of good inclusion practices was found in the book through the account of Susie Anderson, who says, It was nice they included Evelyn Good on Coley and Odujiri Lynn Coley. This was, a, this was a great example of inclusion, not because they included indigenous athletes, but Evelyn Gulagon Cawley is one of the greatest women tennis players of all time. She is 12th of all time when it comes to Grand Slams and has 82 singles titles. Yes, I can see why Sudi loved this inclusion. She just happened to be indigenous, but she was a great tennis player. In December 2019, the Educational Council and the and Australian Education Ministers created the Alice Springs Education Declaration, a series of policy documents that highlights the national education goals and commitments. One of the goals specifically states that the Australian education system should promote excellence and equity. This is, this is in conjunction with the current system in the Australian curriculum where Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander histories and cultures are one of the three cross-curriculum priorities included and intercultural understanding is one of the seven general capabilities in each learning area that teachers must use to teach classes. Critics have said, however, that that can be ineffective as they have found teachers embedding Aboriginal perspectives led to misinterpretation and misunderstanding um, of the indigenous uh, culture and that led to negative positioning of indigenous students in the classroom. Harrison and Greenfield 
did a study of 12 primary schools and found that students are not learning Aboriginal views or perspectives. Rather, they are learning about their non-Aboriginal teachers' perspective on Aboriginal Australia. They are learning their teachers' meta-narrative about Aboriginal people. It's clear that if we want to create a diverse environment where kids of all backgrounds can feel included, we as teachers must be properly trained and ready. After all, after all, there's a professional standard and requirement to be a graduate and full-time teacher. My hope is that when I'm a teacher, when I think of the term race in schools, it only brings good memories.